Voice of Judah Israel is a mover and shaker in a land that is being awakened, and we are witnessing revival in the making. We are a dynamic Israeli ministry that is making a difference in the land. Touching hearts, changing lives, spreading the gospel with power, planting new congregations, feeding and clothing the poor, caring for families and building stronger communities, discipling a generation of young leaders. Voice of Judah Israel, the revival has begun. Amen. Let's put our hands together and welcome to the platform of the Rock Church. Let's give Pastor Israel Pachter a great big welcome. Come on, put your hands together and let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. Oh, I feel like at home. You may be seated. <laughs> Praise God. It's great to be together and wonderful to worship Yeshua, worship Jesus on this Sunday morning. You know, for us it's Shabbat, uh, Shabbat evening, sunset, new day, but uh, it's really great to be together and worship King of Kings. He's Israeli Jewish Messiah, but he is also Messiah of the nations and the Messiah of your life. Mashiach, Messiah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, uh, my Israeli team praying for you because when we walk together as Jew and Gentiles and we worship Jesus together, miracles are happened. And we see it again and again. Miracles are happened and God changing lives and just setting our hearts and fire for him and I know all of you here because you love the Lord, but there is always more, right? Always more. His kingdom, the spiritual dimension is great, and we're going to grow more and more until the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I'm so excited. Now, I have to tell you, in Israel, we speak many languages. I speak a, a few and three daily in my office. Sometimes by the end of the day, you kind of losing it, you know, and you don't remember what you do and what you speak. But uh, in Israel, we speak fast. I love the way your pastor speak. It's so nice. And I understand every word. It's beautiful. <laughs> In Israel, we speak fast, and the English is not my first language, it's actually third, and I do a grammar mistakes, and I have my accent. So if I go too fast, please wave your hand, okay? And I will slow down for you. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, God is really moving. He's moving here in America, obviously, but it is also moving all over Middle East and is moving in Israel. Praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. It's a wonderful, beautiful times. You know, living in the land of Israel, walking in the land of Israel, we literally see, I literally see biblical prophecies. Now, we're speaking about ancient biblical prophecies. Uh, the prophecies that were released and given 2,500, 600, 700 years ago. And some of them even older. Some of them, like Abraham, about 4,000 years ago. Can you imagine? And we see fulfillment today. Hallelujah. Pastor, you have to come, right? You have to, I know you've been there. It's a new day. It's a new day. No, I mean, you have to come to Israel. <laughs> you, you're coming. Okay, right. And you know, uh, you're right, Pastor John. When we connected in the conference, I just felt something in my spirit. I knew we need to connect. We need to, you know, we need to build a relationship, build, 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 build bridges between our ministries and congregations, churches. And here am I. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. Praise God. And I'm really full of expectation to see what Holy Spirit is going to do here tonight, this morning uh, with you. And of course, tonight with other <laughs> beloved brother from New York City. God is good. But you know, uh, I remember just a few years ago, I've been uh, taking my devotional time on the coast of uh, my city. Uh, it's Mediterranean city, city of Ashdod, uh, known in the Bible as city of Philistines, but actually it is heritage of Judah. Joshua 15, 16 says, here are the cities of tribe of Judah, one of them Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gaza. 
Gethekron and, and others. So uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant uh, was taken by Philistines and brought into my city. And actually from my office, I can see the hill when Temple of Dagon used to stay. You, you remember what happened? Remember what happened? In the morning, they came up to worship their gods and idol of Dagon fell down. They put it back. They put it back, okay? Next day they come in, it fell down again and lost his head and arms, right? Hallelujah, it's happened in my city, less than a mile from my congregation, from my church. There is many great prophecies that actually came to pass and going to come to pass, and one of the known stories, it's uh, Acts chapter 8, history of Philip the Evangelist. Remember Philip the Evangelist? He baptized Ethiopian Enoch, and then Holy Spirit took him and moved him, physically he moved him from this place, it's close to Gaza, to my city of Ashdod or Azotus in New Testament. That's Azotus, yeah, that's Ashdod. Greeks, a little bit spoiled it. They turned Ashdod to Azotus in English, but it's Ashdod. Okay, so if you're walking in your city and suddenly you walk up in my city, that's okay. You're not the first. <laughs> Well, uh, praise God, but God really moving. There is great history, and it's wonderful to study history, but it, there is also wonderful, glorious present, and even more glorious future, because, because it's all written in the Bible. You have it in your books, and by the way, in your Bible maps, my city is in, in your maps. You can find the uh, south of Tel Aviv River, south of Jaffa River, my city is by this river. Anyway, again, God is on the move, he's doing amazing things. And you know, moving to Ashdod, I started to study. You know, I lived in Tel Aviv, I did a ministry of evangelism in Tel Aviv. It was wonderful years, and one day, I went to Ashdod <clears throat> just to visit family. I led one family to the Lord, and I came to visit them. And uh, driving into the city, I have, I have encountered very sp special, uh, 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 what can I, how can I call it? it? It was a vision, open vision very special experience, open vision, and I saw future of my city, of Ashdod. Obviously, many, many thousands of Israelis, like obviously Israelis, worshiped Yeshua. That's his Hebrew name, Jesus, right, Yeshua. They worshiped Yeshua, and many details, uh, youth, nations, miracles, many things, but main vision was a big local congregation or church, we call them congregation in the land of Israel, and then I heard voice of God. And I'm not sure, was it physical voice or inner voice, but it was clear and loud. And God spoke to me, leave everything behind. Move to Ashdod and start this congregation. I was 31 years old and it's changed my life. I cried and, and, you know, and, and prayed and it was an amazing, amazing experience. Now, on the way, God didn't show me all the difficulties I'm going to face, all the challenges and even persecutions I'm going to face, praise the Lord. You know, sometimes it's better not to know what you're going to face. You see the vision, you see the glorious future going there, and it helps you to fight your daily battles, right? Help you to overcome obstacles, amen? And sometimes uh, I remember finding myself uh, always complaining to the Lord, not always, sometimes complaining to the Lord, why it's so difficult? Why you didn't show me? But his grace is sufficient. Amen? His grace is sufficient and he is amazing. And he did so many miracles. It was very, very tough journey. And we did, had, uh, we did have uh, lots of persecutions. But eventually, congregation is growing, overcoming. We see miracles and no one can stop us. And we're preaching the gospel. And it's just incredible. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to remind you, same God and same power of Holy Spirit given to you. And I don't know what you feel this morning. I don't know when you in your journey with the Lord in your life. But God, he is faithful. And everything he promised to you, he going to fulfill. And you... And you have great promises. Hallelujah. You have great promises. They're all in the Bible. All the promises of Abraham, given to Abraham and his people, they are truth also for you, true Israeli Messiah, Jewish Yeshua, who is also your Savior, your Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
you know, moving to Ashdod, I was studying Bible and I have no time, you know, for Sunday morning to share all the stories and my discoveries, but I found wonderful prophecies. And also I found that actually my city in the Bible and study history, I found that many prophecies, they never came to pass. You know, they never came to pass and, and I, could, I could see they actually mean to come to pass in our days. And I remember coming with like Zechariah, book of Zechariah to one of the scholars. I came to him, scholars of the Bible, you know, Dr. Uh, Ulf, uh, European doctor uh, of theology. And I showed him and I said, he's great on prophecy. And I told him, uh, I have a question. I see the scriptures and it looks like we are in the scriptures. And I don't mean in the spirit, physically, geographically, in our days, our timeline. We are in those prophecies about Ashdod, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 12. I remember he studied, he checked the prophecies, and he goes like, wow, I never have seen that. But yes, it's about you. Zechariah have seen your days. And we live in the same time. So it's also about you. Hallelujah. Can you imagine there's prophecies that are given specifically to our generation, to our time, to us in Ashdod? But now we connect it. It's also for your church, for your life, for your family here in America. Prophets, they have seen our days. Hallelujah. Is it amazing? I know it's sometimes overwhelming. I need to calm myself down. You know, like we have to work to do, not just to be excited. We have work to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> But also I would love to read Isaiah 62 just to show you it's portionally what we are doing in Israel today. It says, God is speaking, right? Through the prophet, he's, he's saying to us, go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Take out the stones. Lift up a banner for the people. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world, say to the daughter of Zion, which is mean to Israel, right? Say to the daughter of Zion, to Bat Sion, we say it in Hebrew, Bat Sion, surely your salvation is coming. Hallelujah. Surely is salva your salvation is coming. He's speaking about salvation and redemption. If you keep reading it, salvation and redemption. Restoration. Hallelujah. And this restoration taking place. Now, if you read biblical prophecies, if you read all the prophecies of the Bible, of course, 90% of them, they are about Israel. Not all, but 90% of them about Israel. And if you summarize all these prophecies and you want to just make few uh, clear, simple points, what God planned to do and, and uh, doing and planning to do, you can put them together in very simple uh, points. First, exile is coming to Israel. And it was 2,000 years ago, right? Destruction, exile is coming. And, you know, gospel will be preached. Gospel will go out to the nations first. You know, uh, Jewish people, they received gospel from Yeshua, from Jesus. And then they went to the nations to preach the gospel. And Israel uh, become devastated land, a desert, a cursed land. You know, Mark Twain, your American writer, he traveled in Israel about uh, 140 years ago. And he wrote in his diary, he said, I traveled from Damascus, which is Syria, uh, today, Damascus to Jerusalem. On my way, I have seen only one tree. Okay? That's the, that's the documentary. And he add to it, this land is cursed, devastated. It's become, a, once blossom land become a desert. And then he made a conclusion and he said, and it will never alive again. But he wasn't prophet. Hallelujah. He wasn't prophet. Hallelujah. <laughs> And God is doing miracles. Yeah, he, did, he did great description, you know, what Israel looked like just hundred some years ago. But uh, now we face miracles. When you travel over Israel, you see forests, woods, and vineyards, and, and blossom land. And just in my, yeah, praise God. Let's thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Amen. Actually, Ezekiel 36, it's an amazing chapter when God's speaking to, uh, to nations and to Israel. And then he's saying, I, God himself say, I will speak to the fields, to the hills, and I will tell them to produce their crops and yield uh, uh, their fruits and produce branches because my people are coming. And that's very interesting prophecy because from one hand, God said, I will 
do that. He said, I will speak and I will do that. In fact, we know people came. So God works through people, right? People came, they fought their, their, their wars and battles, and they worked hard, and now we see results. Hallelujah. Same for your life. Same for your life. God gave you promises. He told you he will heal you. He will bless you. He will do different things for you. He will use you for his glory. But also you have work to do, right? Not just to sit and wait, but walk with him, worship him, study the Bible, right? Proclaim his promises and raise up your faith and do what he calls you to do. And the rest is the Lord's. Amen? We do our part and he's doing his part. Hallelujah. So we found ourselves right in the middle of this wonderful prophecy when God say, prepare my people for my return. Prepare the land. Prepare the people. That's why we focus on Aliyah, immigration. You know, it's just wonderful. We, host in, we don't have normal immigration like you guys here in America, you brothers. Uh, we have a Jewish immigration. When Jewish people coming back, uh, they return to the land of Israel. Many from northern land. There are many prophecies about northern land. Next time you read your Bible and you read prophecy about northern land, remember, northern Jews, they are, I will tell you a secret, Northern Jews, it's our geography, if you go north from Jerusalem, northern Jews, they are Ukrainian and Russian Jews. And they're coming, they're coming, thousands and thousands of them coming back to the land. You know, they were fisher, time for fishermen, now it's time for hunters, there is war, and they're running back to Israel uh, just to come back to their nation, hallelujah. You know, God used everything, but he's keeping his word. And it's such a blessing to see details of the Bible, you know, and, you know, just all the details of the Bible, even little things, they're accurate, they're powerful. So keep confessing your word. You know, I've been reading with Pastor John, your proclamation about your donations and giving. That's so powerful. It's a Bible. Yeah, we need to keep to confess them. Hallelujah. Because that's the way God works in our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So like I, like I told you, if you want to summarize all the biblical prophecies, what's going to happen with Israel? First, exile, and it happened. It's in the past. And then prophet Isaiah said many times, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all the prophets, they said again and again and again. But then later, I will visit you in the nations, and I will take you from the nations. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. Hallelujah. I will protect you. I will restore you. I will be with you. That's the second point. Okay? First, exile. Second, it's return. And uh, people like John Hagee and many others, they're focusing on that and study the Bible and see what God is doing in physical dimension, what God is doing with Israel today, with the land, with people, with armies. And it's amazing. But there is more. There is more. Things have to happen before he will return. There is more. One more thing. And it says in Ezekiel 37 and many other prophecies, and I will pull my spirit on you, and you will know me. Hallelujah. I will pull my spirit on you, on people of Israel, and you will know me. So the last sign for the nations. The last sign what God is going to do with Israel before final day of the Lord and all Israel will be saved. The last sign, it's actually spiritual revival in the land. Hallelujah. Spiritual revival in the land. When Israelis, Jewish people, Israel, Israelis, coming to their own Messiah, coming to know Yeshua, coming to know Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're witnessing salvations. We're witnessing how salvation is growing. And it's so powerful. And I can tell you, I started my ministry in Israel, in Tel Aviv, 24 years ago. And I can tell you, it was tough. Very, very difficult. Israelis, they're great people. But when, but when it's coming to the gospel, you know what Paul said about blindness? What Paul said, he, uh, God himself said, I will hide my face for them, from them for a while. Because then it says, and then I will reveal myself, my, my face to them. Hallelujah. Okay, there's both. Hiding and then revealing. Okay? So it was tough. And love of Christians 
wasn't known to Israel 24 years ago, seriously. And God really used all various organizations, and one of them, John Hagen, Kufai, and many, many others, Bridges of Peace, and Christian Embassy, and there is lots of them. Some of them already gone, some of them there, lots of them. And I remember when I, my pastor, my first pastor, sent me out and he said, go to Holocaust survivors. I know they have needs and we receive donation from Canada. We want to bless them from Christians. Just go and tell them, speak to them. We want to bless them. So I remember coming to this uh, old Jewish people and telling them, we are here. We are a local organization. I wouldn't say church. I say organization. We want to help. We want to love on you and just pass blessing. Do you have needs? And they would say, oh, yeah, we have lots, lots of needs. We have lots of needs. Today they do better, praise the Lord, because many Christians are helping them. But I remember, she asked me, lady asked me, well, but who are the donors? And I said, Christians. You know what was her response 24 years ago? Christians? No, thank you. No. Today, 24 years, late, 24 years later, Holocaust survivors and many other organizations, they call me and they're telling me, we heard you're working with Christians. We know Christians are good people. They love our people. They help our people unconditionally. Could you help us? Could you introduce us? Could you connect us? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Romans 11, your call is provoke Israel Provoke Jewish people jealousy for the Lord. Amen? And now it's happening. You see, not only Old Testament prophecies, also New Testament prophecies, they come into pass. And that's incredible. You impacting Israel by your prayers, by your love, by your support, you really impacting Israel. Hallelujah. And what's John Hagee do? It's amazing to teach Christians on Israel, to teach and educate Christians what God is doing, because there's so many confusion in, in, today in the world, even in America, so much confusion, you know? And it's great, great to, bring, to bring kingdom clarity, right? Kingdom vision, prophetic word. Because I have seen people who loved Israel uh, without foundation, without biblical foundation. They would raise flags. They would uh, sing Havana Gila. And then they would see the news, negative news about Israel. Again and again and again. And they would back off. They would change their mind. They would, oh, I'm not sure now. Because, because you know, there is bad news from Israel. Maybe they're not that good. So it's important to know Bible. Biblical foundation. Biblical foundation. Amen. And I can tell you, as Israel, I know some Christians, when they teach about Israel, you can have a sense like it is a perfect country, right? It's a beautiful, it is beautiful, but it's like perfect country. Now I have to, I, maybe I will disappoint you, but you will never meet Israeli. You would never meet even one Israeli who would say, Israel always right. All they do is perfect. All they do is right. No, they are people. They do mistakes. You in America have two political parties, right? You know how, how much we have in Israel? 17. In the Knesset, in our government, 17. Lots of different opinions. Right and left and middle and in between and all kind of. It's Israel. <laughs> it's country full of controversy, you know. But we don't focus on people. We don't focus on political stuff. And there is time to speak about politics as well, of course. But first of all, it's a kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. It's kingdom of God and what God is doing. Amen. People can be right and people can be wrong. But prophecy will always save you. You know, word of God always keep you safe. Hallelujah. And it's very, very important. <clears throat> now, I have seen when revelation about Israel is growing, there is always movement of the Holy Spirit, really. I travel to many nations, and always I noticed where is the power of God, where is healing ministry, where is the revelation, where is kingdom manifestations. People always pray for Israel. <clears throat> is it amazing? Why? Because we are connected in the Spirit. Hallelujah. We are connected in the Spirit. And we're coming closer to the last days. So gospel going to grow and change and affect the nations, but also Israel. Hallelujah. Now God has put Israel on the map. 
praise the Lord. And you know, Israel, it's very little country. You know, size of Israel, it's like your New Jersey. Yeah. Very little, very small. Surrounded by big, very big nations who are living to destroy Israel. But God is keeping his hand over people of Israel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is moving and doing miracles. It's not easy. It's not easy. But it's just wonderful. You know, God is doing miracles in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of war. I know a few years ago, a book of John Hagee about blood moons were released. And, you know, people were talking about it a lot. And recently some man came to me in Europe and he asked me, Israel, we heard about American revelation of a blood moon. So tell me, does really anything happened in Israel or in our Israel? I just smile. Not just anything happened. Middle East have changed. In those two years, Middle East have changed. The, the, the rise of ISIS, the rebels in Syria, to, you know, the problems in Egypt, and it actually took Iran, Iraq, all these problems. And yet, in the middle of Middle East, there is a little tiny country, hallelujah, chosen by God, a little free democratic country, hallelujah, full of light and freedom in the midst of Middle East. Really, look at your map. It's right in the middle <laughs> of Middle East. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And God is rising Jerusalem. He is keeping his hand. Now, I, I can tell you a story. Like I said, Israel is not perfect, and it's important to remember. Not everything Israel does is right. Really. Otherwise, you will be disappointed. You know, I don't want you to be disappointed. I don't want you to have biblical perspective. You know, you will hear bad reports and most of them uh, false. They're not really true, but some of, some of it true because we do mistakes like everybody else, like every nation. Is America perfect? Really? Are you sure about it? Even with Trump, it's still not perfect? <laughs> yeah, we are people. But what's most important for Christians, for believers, it's what God is doing. Amen? What God is doing. And he used every government. And that's incredible. Even government maybe we don't like or things we don't agree. He used everything. And he preparing us for final day of the Lord. He preparing us for heaven. Hallelujah. For salvation. And we will preach the gospel. When it will be easy and nice and good. And when, when it will be difficult. We will keep preaching the gospel. And build his kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, today I feel led to speak a little bit more about prayers for Israel, prayers about Jerusalem. And you know, uh, recently I have seen many movements that loved Israel, or maybe still love Israel, and they used to pray for Israel all the time. But somehow, with new generation, we changed leadership, they just lost it. And I've been approached to by Russian Christians, Ukrainian Christians, European Christians. And, and they told me sometime, oh, we used to pray for Israel. And it's got my attention. Used to pray. Used to pray. Interesting, right? And I started to check what's going on, why it's used to. And I asked questions. And I, you know what I found? People still love Israel, and they probably had some leaders who, who would speak about it again and again and bring, bring, uh, bring it in and remember about Israel, remind us about Israel uh, to pray. But also, there were not really connection with the land of Israel. There were no connection with believers in Israel, living stones of Israel, which is Messianic believers or used to call them Jewish Christians. I like more, you know, Messianic believers. Churches, congregations in, in the land of Israel. They had no connection. They had no real news, no, no guiding line how to pray for Israel besides of gener generic prayers, just general prayers. God bless, protect, keep, you know, it's it. And then you, you don't know what else to pray for, you know. Uh, media, only bad reports. Okay, God protect Israel, it's it. And because of lack of connection, many just st stopped praying or pray less. Because, you know, how much you can pray the same prayer? Bless, save, protect, it's it. Right? I, I, and I found, like, I need to know details. I want to hear updates. I want to hear about miracles and what God really is doing there. Amen? 
Not only when war comes to pray, but daily prayer. And that's why God led us to uh, really build communications, to, let, to lead Christians how to pray for Israel specifically, like weekly, you know, what God is doing in Israel, uh, the projects that come, upcoming projects, and I doesn't speak about only uh, my church or my city. I speak in generally about land of Israel, what's coming, problems, challenges, and we have them all. Well, you can imagine, we have all kind of problems and challenges uh, on and on and on and on. But prayers they are really powerful. They are changing situations. They are changing reality. Hallelujah. So we're sending letters and helping people to pray, but also we send back reports, testimonies, what God has done through your prayers, just to bring connection, raise awareness and bring connections and help you to pray with fire, with power. And I don't know about you, but when I pray, I want to see results. When I pray... I want to hear what God has done. You know, one time I had a crazy situation. I was preaching in German churches in Germany, uh, mostly small churches, uh, some big Sundays, but middle week meetings, small gatherings. And I remember I was in one church, and it was, I don't know, just difficult. I don't know, people not responding. No, no. It's different culture, of course. It's not like Americans. Yes, brother, amen. I love your church. Hallelujah. <laughs> just quiet. No emotions, you know, like small, a small audience of maybe 50 people, you know, like and people just serious. And if they get very excited, they would do like that. <laughs> oh, revival is there. So, and it was last meeting and it, I was tired and at the end I pray for sick. Same thing, no response, no, just the, people very polite. Just not emotional, but very polite, you know. Uh, thank you, pastor, and I, and I, and I gone. Two years later, a group from Germany of young people came to our congregation, and one lady came to me and said, Pastor Israel, I want to share with you. Do you remember you was in our church, and she explained me when it was, and I'm like, oh, that was most difficult and less, the most less emotional meeting I ever had in my life. Oh, yeah, I remember. And she goes, do you remember you prayed for sick? Yes, I remember. And she said, I had car accident when I was a child, and I grew up with back pain all my life, and nothing would help me. I struggled a lot. You prayed for me. Next morning, I woke up in the morning, and I was totally healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what my, my response was? Where have you been two years? <laughs> We want to see results, right? We want to hear stories. We want to, you know, be connected. Hallelujah. Praise God. Same with Israel. So let's read Psalms 122. 122, verse 6 and 9. I know you know that, but let's read together. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. That's amazing prayer guide, guideline because it also gives us reasons. Mostly God just tells us, pray for such and such and you just need to obey, right? Here, he just opened it up and kind of giving us directions and promising us what's going to happen with my life, what's going to happen with your life, with your church, with your family, if you do what God asks you to do. Right? And it says here, May those who love you, when you pray for Jerusalem, peace of Jerusalem, may those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security with your citadels. Listen, for the sake of the house, just a minute, for the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Hallelujah. So God actually addressing our prayer life. And it teaches us. It teaches us. It's saying, when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, when you pray for Israel, it will affect your life. It will affect your family, relatives, kids, parents, husband, wife, other relatives. And it's even affect your ministry. It says in the end, for the sake of the house of the Lord. That's your ministry, right? That's your church, your ministry, your call on your life. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Hallelujah. So here's spiritual truth. Truth that God is teaching us. When you pray for Israel, 
something will happen with your life. And you know, uh, not in every place I preach this message because I'm from Israel. You know, my name is Israel. Pastor Israel, yes, I'm from Israel. I'm Jewish, you know, saved in the age of 18, praise God, and dedicate my life to build kingdom of God in Israel, but also in the nations. And sometimes feel like, well, good for you. You're speaking about your own people, right? But it's a Bible. It's Bible. Amen? It's God's promises. Hallelujah. It's work for me, but I think it's work for nations, for Gentiles, for you even better. Even better. Because you have no personal interest. You know, when you pray for Israel and when great things happening in Israel, in physical, you can say just, okay, good for you, guys. Right? But in the spirit, we are connected. We're speaking about spiritual dimension. We are connected. You know, we call to be Jew and Gentiles, to walk together, to build kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, praise the Lord. When you start to pray for Israel, things are going to change. You will see more miracles. You will see open heaven. Hallelujah. And actually, because you have no personal interest, it works even more powerfully. And one of the examples, I remember, one of the examples I can tell you, it's another principle of God, one of the Ten Commandments. It's honor your father and mother. Right? You remember that? It's a, it's a commandment with promise. Honor your father and mother. And God said, if you do so, you will be blessed. And blessed is not just God bless you. In Israel, it's bracha. You will be mevorach, you know, bracha. It means overwhelming blessing. God will keep you and bless you and will take care of your relationship, restore your life, and it's healing, and it's prosperity. It's all of it. And we have no time to speak about it, but it's a whole subject. What is Bracha, what is God's blessing? Okay, so that was God, what God is going to do. And he said, respect or honor your father and mother. Now, if your father and mother are rich, that makes sense, right? If they're going to give you heritage, it makes sense to honor them, right? Be wise. I mean, it's, it's reasonable, right? But what if, what if they, they were or they are bad parents? They didn't take care of you. You know, they didn't love you. They were maybe, I don't know, drug addicted. What about them? Do you have excuse not to honor them? Maybe by people, yes, but God, by God, by God's kingdom, no. Right? And if you don't want to do it for them, for their sake, because maybe you feel like maybe they don't deserve it, and maybe it's right, but God said, do it for my sake. Do it for yourself. Do it for God and do it for you because when you do that, even there is maybe no connection. Like I told you, rich parents, there is connection. There is a reason, right, to respect them. But if they're bad or poor, maybe physically, there is no reason to bless them and honor them. But in the spirit, you release blessing over your life. Amen? Heavens will be open and blessing will come over your, over your life. I see some movements here. What is it? Call your mama. That's right. Call your daddy. <coughs> Maybe you didn't pray for them for a while. That's a good time. Right? Same principle applies for Israel. Hallelujah. You pray for peace of Jerusalem, and you will see God will lead you to pray for other nations. He will lead you to pray for your neighbors. It's just like an unlocking power for your spiritual life. Hallelujah. And it's amazing. In other scripture, Isaiah, Isaiah 62, it says here, God speaking, okay? God speaking. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. And give him, God himself, give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is right there. That's what God is doing today with your life, with your church. He's taking you in the spirit and placing you on the walls of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And that's your call to see what's happening in the spirit, to pray and to proclaim God's will. 
you know, God's prophecies, God's prophetic word. Hallelujah. That's amazing call. It's powerful. You know, you are far away from Jerusalem. You live here in America, right? You live here. But you know what happened with Ezekiel? Ezekiel didn't live in Israel. Ezekiel lived in Babylon, modern days Iraq. He lived in Iraq. Okay? It was Jewish exile, and he lived in Iraq with Jewish people. God would took him. Like to show him his, his, his glory, not only in Israel, but also in Iraq. Hallelujah. And we need his glory come back to Iraq, right? Once again in all Middle East. Hallelujah. He would take him in the spirit from Iraq and he will move him into temple of Jerusalem. And he will show him even secret, even secret places and secret scenes. And he would tell him, pray. And he would tell him, talk to them, send them a letter. And he would get back to his country. And he will prophesy. Hallelujah. And we're reading his prophecies. And it's powerful, right? And they're very accurate and they come into pass. That's what God will do with your life. When you agree. <clears throat> when you agree with him. When you agree with prophets. When you agree with Jesus. To pray for what is in his heart. And when you agree to pray for Israel. You will see many miracles. You will you will pray for the nations. You will pray for different nations. It never stops with Israel. It's a beginning. It's a foundation. And that's amazing. But when you walk into spiritual dimension, that's what's going to happen. Hallelujah. And I know if you say yes this morning, your spiritual life will change. You will pray more. You will pray more. But it won't be like hard burden. It's, it will be joyous experience. You will experience freshness in your prayer life. You will experience presence of the Holy Spirit. You will encounter an angelic visitations and different signs. Hallelujah. Because that's what happened when church pray for Israel and pray whatever Holy Spirit leads them to pray. And I have seen people who hardly pray. You know, not every Christian has strong prayer life. You know, and some Christians just kind of missing it or losing it for a while. And then by the Holy Spirit coming back to pray more, you know. And I have seen strong men who hardly pray. Just sometimes say a few words, thank you Jesus, hallelujah. Started to pray for Israel. And their spiritual life changed totally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we are connected in the spirit. That's what God is doing. That's what God is doing in Israel. Hallelujah. All kind of miracles and wonders. And he needs our prayers. You know, in the beginning, 2,000 years ago, Jesus picked up his 12 Israeli, 12 Jewish disciples. He trained them and he sent them out to save nations. Hallelujah. All God needed, 12 tough guys. 12 Jewish disciples to change nations. You know what it takes to save Israel, to change Israel, to influence Israel today? Efforts of all the words, all the world. <laughs> really, really, we need your prayers. We need your prayers. It's not easy. We're coming closer to the last days. And we see battles and we struggles and tribulations. But God is going to keep his word and we will see more glory. Hallelujah. Now for closing, I would love to read last scripture for, for this morning. Isaiah 60, 1 and 2. It says here, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And he's speaking to Israelis, but also it's, it's also given to you in Jesus. Amen. True Jesus. Hallelujah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and glory of the Lord is risen upon you. What a wonderful message. But then it says, For behold, be ready, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. So here is two kind of news, good and bad. God is telling us, bad news, okay? The bad news, darkness growing to grow. We're going to see more and more darkness. We're going to see, not in us, hallelujah. You're going to hear tonight about what is in us. It's only light and salvation and power of God, right? Right, Brother John? In the world, we will see growing darkness. I would love to tell you, no, we're going to see good times, only good times. No. Unfortunately, no. Jesus said, when you will see all the signs, you, you know I'm coming, and all the signs are bad, difficult, tough, okay? So darkness going to grow. 
That's a bad news. But good news, and they're greater. Good news, God is speaking to us. Arise and shine. Because it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about his kingdom. For your light has come. Your light has come. And what is your light? Jesus. Amen. Your light has come. And glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the midst of the darkness, we're going to see glory of God. In the midst of tribulations and war and problems, we're going to see more and more growing glory of God. We will see angels. We will see Jesus changing this earth. We will see power of God flowing through our lives. Not only through pastor, of course God is going to use pastor, but also through your life. You will pray and you will see miracles. You will pray and you will see salvations. You will speak and smile. And just through your smile, God will move. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the glory of last days. Darkness is going, going to be darker and darker, but light going to be brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it's going to happen in Israel and it's going to happen in America. Hallelujah. And now we are together and we're going to pray for each other. My team already praying for you. Thank you, Pastor, for the invitation. Now you are on our spiritual map and I hope we are on your spiritual map, right? And we're going to pray even more for each other and see glory of the Lord. So let's stand up together. And worship team, could you come, please? I have three prayers God put on my heart to pray for you, okay? Before we close, just two prayers. First of all, when Holy Spirit is speaking to people, when He's touching hearts, and all, He always doing something for us in our spirits, but also in our body. So I would love to pray for healing. I'm not going to call you up, but just where you at. You know, if you have any sickness, any physical problem, raise your hand, please. Raise your hand and we will pray. You know, Bible said, pray for each other to be healed. So raise your hand, and boss, but also look around. And if you see people with raised hand up, please lay your hand on him, okay? Let's cover each other with prayer. Raise your hand. God's going to use you right now. Not only me, you, all of us, okay? Uh, touch his shoulder, touch, touch his or take his hand and pray for him also. If you need prayer, that's the, that's the best. If you need prayer, receive, but also pray for other. Amen? Hallelujah. And let's pray for just presence of the Lord and for the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In last couple of years, we have seen so many miracles and so many healings in Israel. It's just incredible. And I remember in the days of revival, when I was in the different nations, you pray for people and they get, get healed or not. We have new, fresh movement of the Holy Spirit. Many times, nothing happening right there. Sometimes it does, just to encourage us. But many times, Later in the day, next day, I have seen strong miracles for non-believers when he prayed. Five days later, it's crazy. Five days la later, lady woke up totally healed and she knew it's because of prayer. Hallelujah. So let's pray for each other right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your promises and for your presence. Thank you for power in your name, Yeshua. Hallelujah. So we're standing on your great promises, Yeshua. We're proclaiming your will and your promises. And I pray in the name of Yeshua, B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, for your healing, Lord. Touch every one of us right now. Touch and heal, Lord. Heal us. We rebuke all the pain in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all the sickness and all the diseases in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all the sickness and we proclaim in healing B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. B'Shem Yeshua in the name of Jesus. We release your healing, Lord. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed because Adonai Rofecha, He is your healer. Adonai Rofecha, B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Hallelujah. The Bible says Adonai Rofecha, in Hebrew it's like He is your doctor. He is your healer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First prayer. Well, Hallelujah. Second prayer, praying for your church, I received the word, and I want to release it, word of refreshment in the Holy Spirit. Refreshment, it's book of Acts, chapter 3, uh, verse 19 and 20. It says about refreshment 
from the presence of the Lord. And other translations in Hebrew, it says from the face of the Lord. The face of the Lord. Where is face of the Lord, there is his presence, right? So let's pray. Just a minute, just a short prayer. But close your eyes and receive a blessing. Receive his encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence here. Hallelujah. And Lord, we're praying. Touch us. Refresh us, Lord. Touch us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and refresh our lives. Hallelujah. We open our hearts before you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need your fire in our hearts. We need your help, Lord. For those of us who kind of lost our vision and not, we're not sure what you're doing, Lord, we're praying, touch our lives, Jesus. Touch our lives and bring us back, Lord, to fullness in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, come and touch our hearts, touch our lives, Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you for your presence, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, amen, thank you, Jesus, we always make jokes in Israel after prayers, I don't know about you, but I feel his presence, <laughs> hallelujah, I don't know about you, but I feel blessed, amen, I hope you are blessed, amen. Last prayer, I would love to pray in Hebrew, just to release blessing. Pastor, could you come and stand next to me, please? Uh, God himself spoke to Moses, and he said to him, here is a prayer. I've given you prayer. Release this prayer over my people, and they will be blessed. And it's, we call it Aaronic blessing. He taught Aaron, and, he, and we pray in this pr prayer. Uh, but I will pray in original language. And uh, you know the words, right? God will bless you and keep you. He will shine his face over you, which is just this expression. He will shine his face over you. It's powerful, okay? And he will keep you and bless you, amen? But I will pray in Hebrew. So could you raise your hand and just receive his blessing? Hallelujah. And Holy Spirit, understand languages, and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Ivarechecha Adonai ve'ishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha ve'ikunecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha ve'yasem lecha shalom. B'shem Yeshua Mashiach. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed? You're blessed today. Amen. What, what an awesome, awesome word. And I appreciate this man of God so much. And you know, we're going to just.